The EMD SD70 series of locomotives was the next logical step in the evolution of diesel technology following the 40, 50, and 60 series diesels. I'm Railfan AC, and you're watching Trains in the 21st Century. Norfolk Southern SD60E No. 6906 began life as the Chicago Northwestern SD60 No. 8048 before becoming Union Pacific SD60 No. 5998 during the UP buyout of the CNW. It was sold to Helm Leasing where it kept its UP road number before being sold yet again, this time to Norfolk Southern where it was numbered 6546. NS was buying up used SD60s to be converted to more fuel-efficient, eco-friendly SD60E models. Of the 250 that were planned, 135 were constructed with the remaining SD60s sold off. The 6906 is shown here at the Juniata shops just chilling on the beautiful spring day of May 10, 2017. Two and one half years later we caught the 6906 again. This time it was charging hard up the 10 mile climb to Clark Summit with 124 cars in tow. According to the conductor of this train, their weight was within 200 tons of the maximum tonnage for the power they had on the train today. Keeping in mind that the trailing GP40 was probably offline. In video T183, we talked about the Norfolk Southern's rebuilt EMD SD60E. The 60 series diesels was EMD's response to the many complaints from the failed 50 series locomotives as well as the proving ground for its new 710 line of diesel engines. The SD60E was a step up from the standard SD60s with more horsepower, better emissions, digital technology, and a 710G3B prime mover as opposed to the 710G3A found in the standard SD60s. The logical next step was the new generation of EMDs, the SD70 locomotives. The SD70 was something of a special request by NS who wanted to stick with standard cabs and wasn't originally in the builder's catalog. This comes in line with the D940Cs of that same era which was another Norfolk Southern only exclusive model. Conrail's 24 SD70s were financed by NS and were built in Altoona with the understanding that they would become NS's in the split. In turn, CSX got the 15 SD70 Max. Apparently, the Southern Peru Copper Corporation and Illinois Central, now the Canadian National, picked up the model after the NS had requested it. Most SD70s are still in service today, however, they are aging and many have been and are scheduled to be rebuilt into AC Traction SD70 ACCs.
The SD60i is an SD60M with the isolated or whisper cab. It's fitted with a cab that is isolated from the frame of the locomotive with rubber gaskets which reduces noise and vibrations from the prime mover. Spotting an isolated cab on any EMD is easy by the seam that runs across the nose and on the long hood where the cab connects with the body. Only the Canadian National bought the SD70i having 26 of them in total. And that's 2585 North, 931 after stopping. CPF 672. This is Lord Fast Signals playing stop indication. Northward direction, main one, or main track to main track, handling our route over. The SD70M has the North American safety cab. There are two versions of this cab on the SD70M, the Phase 1 cab and the Phase 2 cab. The Phase 1 cab was first introduced on the SD60M and the boxier, angular Phase 2 cab, I call them notch noses, is shared with the Phase 2 SD90 Mac, SD89 Mac, and the SD80 ACE. The SD70M has D90TR DC traction motors and the 710G3B prime mover. They generate 109,000 pounds of continuous tractive effort. All Phase 2 and some Phase 1 SD70Ms have the SD45 style flared radiators which allow for the larger radiator cores needed for split cooling. Production of the SD70Ms ended in 2004 with the production of the SD70M-2. Over 1,600 SD70Ms were built with most going to the Union Pacific who made history by ordering more than 1,400. Other buyers were the CSX, the New York Susquehanna and Western, Norfolk Southern and Southern Pacific and some that were even built for export. NS has recently placed their Phase 2 SD70Ms in storage for eventual sale. The SD70 M-2 is almost identical to the SD70 ACE save for the DC traction motors and the vented box behind the cab on the conductor side of the AC units. It's plated over on the M-2s. The M-2 grew out of the need for EMD to comply with the new tier 2 emissions requirements in the United States. Its biggest competition was the General Electric ES44 DC which outpaced the M-2 in sales. Canadian National and Norfolk Southern operate the largest fleets with the CIT Financial Group having leased out about 11 of them to the Florida East Coast at one point. Just like the Phase 2 SD70Ms, NS has recently placed their SD70M-2s in storage for eventual sale. The SD75M was produced between 1994 and 1996 in response to General Electric's Dash 944CW. They were mainly built as a special request from the Santa Fe and the Bensef and are slightly more powerful than the SD70Ms having 4300 to 4500 horsepower. They're almost identical to the SD70Ms except for the added bulge below the inertial air take on the right side of the unit. The SD75M only sold 76 units mostly to the Santa Fe who bought 51 and then to Bensef who bought another 25 in early 1996 during the merger process. The Santa Fe's SD75Ms were the railroad's last new locomotive purchases with the very last new unit, number 250, built in August 1995. The SD75I was built between 1996 and 1999 and has the isolated cab. 
Other than that, the unit is basically the same as the SD75M as both have the HTCR radial trucks and same horsepower ratings. The SD75I was the last model that used the I designation in the model name. All further wide cabs had the isolated cab, but the model designation continued to use the M. Canadian National had 175, but now has 173. The Benz have had 26, but now has 24. And the Ontario Northland Railway had 6, but now has 5. We'll talk more about the EMD Super 70s locomotives in part 2 of this series. For Trains 21, call me AC.